Hey, I'm FTFE, and welcome back to the channel that fills Stupidity's Christmas stockings with poisonous scorpion. Breaks Stupidity's kneecaps first so it can't escape, and I can take my time. I was pretty sure he forgot to turn the gas stove off in Stupidity's kitchen. <laughs> Hold a pillow on the face of Stupidity until it stops struggling. Shh, shh, just, just stop struggling. Just, just, just let it happen. Stop struggling. It's nearly over. That ties stupidity up in the basement for two weeks and and two weeks. Oh shit! Hold, I'll be right back. Two hours later. Oh, for God's sakes. <sighs> Yeah, so it turns out if you leave stupid tied up for two weeks with no food or water, it doesn't survive. Today, for this special 50th episode, we're going to take a look at the absolute dumbest things Flat Earthers have ever said. However, that is a Herculean task, because, you know, pretty much all of what they say is incredibly fucking dumb compared to the normal standards of human intelligence. So NASA allowed me to draft in some backup from the biggest and best Flat Earth destroyers in the world. You thought Endgame was an ambitious crossover? Nah, you ain't seen nothing yet. Watch as me and the worst looking boy band you've ever seen copy Thanos and snap Flat Earth out of existence for episode 50 of Flurfs Are Idiots. Oh wait, no, I did that wrong. Oh crap, no, not again. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. <laughs> Thank you for joining me once again as we wonder how flat earthers eat breakfast without accidentally digging their eyes out with the spoon. There are so many dumb things that flat earthers have said that it's honestly hard to decide which is the dumbest. But I'm going to start with one of the most moronic members of society I've ever spoken to. He's really, really thick yet claims to be a physicist, a biochemist. Uh, a research scientist, a modified sniper, a teacher, a medic, a virologist, a master of science, a filmmaker, a documentary maker, a VFX artist, a cinematographer, a director, an executive producer, a graphic designer, a video editor, a videographer, a photo forensic expert, a photographer, a mortarman, a philosopher, a theologian, an actor, a dancer, a singer, a studier of languages, a web designer, a writer, a chef, a professional gardener, and claims to have single-handedly debunked Newton and Einstein. It's JM Truth. Like now that I think about it, the sun, we're told, is a big gaseous ball burning in, in space in a vacuum. By the way, since we're on the subject of vacuum, fire, the element by which the sun exerts its energy, and I don't care if it's nuclear fission or what, it's still fire, needs what element, folks, in order to continue to burn? Oxygen. Now, of course, that is laughably wrong on so many levels. The sun isn't on fire. It's a nearly perfect sphere of mostly plasma, 91% of which is hydrogen, under such incredible pressures from its own mass due to gravity that the center undergoes nuclear fusion, converts hydrogen to helium, and releases incredible amounts of energy. This does not require oxygen, because plasma is not fire. However, about 0.97% of the star's mass is made up of oxygen. But JM's comical ignorance of anything physics isn't the dumbest thing here. I mean, it's pretty fucking dumb, but here's the kicker. In a live stream that he was on with Team Skeptic and I, he told me that taking his video, adding the clown face and the music was defacing his personal property and he could have sued me for vandalism. Looks like someone's been getting his legal advice from Sleeping Warrior. Okay, over to the first of the amazing creators helping me take on this mammoth task of quantifying flatter stupidity. He is one of the first creators I ever collaborated with, way back when I was skinny. He lives by some whales or, or something. I don't know. I can't understand the bloody word he says. It's the creaky blinder. Episode 5. 
D of Fleur Sered yet? Well, I never. And I promise I won't mention that for some reason there's already 55 videos in that playlist, but it doesn't matter anyway. It seems like only the other day you invited me to participate in episode 3 of Fleur Sered yet, where we talked about allegedly Dave drinking his own wee wee. Well, I've been drinking urine now for. Drinking you. <laughs> But today we're not going to be talking about anybody's wee wee or drinking thereof, said wee wee. Today we are going to be talking about everybody's favourite Nathan. No, don't worry, it's not Nathan Oakley, it's Nathan Thompson. And for some strange reason, which will remain unknown by most, Nathan does not seem to know the difference between C and C. I'm sorry. You don't have to be sorry, Nathan, but I would suggest maybe sucking it up a little bit. There's a lot of people watching. Sorry I'm such a crybaby. It's fine. You don't need to keep apologising. Is there anything else you'd like to say before I get on with this video? Can't believe this could be the end. I actually meant anything useful, but fine, whatever. So Craig asked me to illustrate the stupidest thing I have ever heard a flat earther say in. And this is what it was. It's perfectly flat, that's why they call it sea level. So not because sea level is the term used to define the base level for measuring depth and elevation on Earth then. Level means free of bends, curves, and irregularities. So it isn't a horizontal line with respect to the distance above or below any given point. Well, silly me. Now we've all heard flat earthers saying water always seeks its level and as much as it pains me to say it, they're kind of, sort of, right. But the big problem for flat earthers is they don't seem to know that there's a difference between level and flat. Now the oceans of the world are one continuous body of water and they seem to completely dismiss the fact that the... <laughs> that sea level is affected by various factors. So winds, currents of the rivers that feed the oceans, variations in gravity, which obviously isn't a real thing anyway, is it? <sighs> <laughs> and the sea temperature, all of which prevent the sea from being truly level. But it is not just Nathan's grossly Hila can something be grossly hilarious? But it isn't just Nathan's hilarious misunderstanding of the difference between the words flat and level that makes this one of the stupidest things I've ever heard a flat earther say in. It's the fact that he thinks that the oceans are called the sea because we can see a long way when we... No, no honestly, I swear. Have a look. You don't see curved, right? So when you see, you're seeing straight on. So it's kind of redundant to say sea level. That is kind of an oxymoron. It's the sea. That's why you can see so far. My word, he's an idiot. And I'm going to leave you with a short story. So an architect has designed a building. And part of the building process was that they needed the floor to be perfectly leveled to facilitate the fitting of floor tile. So he calls in a builder. The builder says, I can level the floor for you for X number of dollars. So the architect signed off on the work order. The builder got on with his job. He rung the architect. Mate, you can come along. Now the floor is perfectly level. So the architect turns up at the building site. The builder's standing there, proud as punch. Look at that, he said, flat as a pancake. And he was right. The floor was perfectly flat. But just to verify his work, the architect decided to put a level on the floor to make sure it was right. And you've guessed it. It was perfectly flat, but it was not level. Because they don't mean the same thing. And the builder was forced to repair his mistake at a cost of $50,000. So I bet that that builder is now completely clear about the difference between flat and level. So what do you think about that, Nathan? I'm sorry guys, I'd say try using the auto-generated subtitles to understand what he was saying, but I don't think they'd be much use. Not even AI understands him. However, if you like, and you know, actually understood what Old Man Creek he was saying, then like all of the amazing creators featured today, his link is in the description. 
the next incredible content creator is, is seriously him i thought i was getting the best of the i'm not having this this is my episode 50 i'm ftfe i'm bloody calling my agent hold on yeah hello nasa yeah it's ftfe yeah i thought you were getting me the best of the best from our special okay so why did you get me fucking planner walk well yeah of course i want to get paid well, all right then i i I'll do as I'm told. Yes, NASA. Sorry, NASA. Yes, I love you too, NASA. Up next is the incredible Planner Walk, I guess. Ahoy, ahoy. I'm Planner Walk, and FTFE asked me to cover the stupidest thing I've ever heard a flat earther say, which is very difficult seeing as they all say such stupid shit. From that time that Anthony Riley said that your independent variable is no longer your independent variable if it produces a null result, to the time that Eric Dubay just pretended like the conservation of momentum just wasn't a thing. I actually think that that might have caused me permanent brain damage because I facepalmed myself so hard. Wait, could I sue Eric Dubay for that? But none of this compares to the time that FTFE was explaining refraction to Rad Vlad. You see, FTFE was showing Rad Vlad an example of refraction. In fact, he was showing him this example. This shows a laser being bent by refraction as it passes through a density gradient. Very simple stuff. But Rad Vlad had a couple of responses, like this one. So, you wish they bent. I I'm you literally wish they showing bent. you a picture of the laser bending right now. I'm literally showing you it. It's right there, right in front of you. So you heard that right. His rebuttal to being shown a picture of a laser bending was that you wish they bent. But that's not the stupidest part. Something's wrong with that laser man, because they don't bend like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're going to be wow. nominating Vlad for dumb fuck of the year now. We lost him. We lost Craig. Dumb Someone fun. Fun. Put in in a... yeah. So yes, he literally said that something is wrong with the laser because they don't bend like that. How could someone come up with something that stupid? Even I couldn't think of something that stupid. Or well, maybe that's because I'm thinking about it. But still, imagine being shown evidence of objects falling to the ground and then responding with, well, something's wrong with that object because objects don't fall to the ground like that. So yes, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard a flat earther say. There's not much to say about it because it really just speaks for itself. Anyway, back to you, FTFE. Why are you pointing down? I'm over here. Bloody useless. If you want to sub to him, then I guess his link will be in the description. The next stupid thing that I want to show you is a really, really stupid thing that you have probably seen on my channel a few times. But its stupidity blows my brain out every time I hear it. It's also the incredible arrogance that is displayed by the one, the only, thank fuck, Sleeping Warrior. A solar eclipse will happen every single month. And why? Because the, it takes 27 days, 27 point something days for the moon to orbit the Earth. So at some point it's going to cross the sun. And it does it every single month. Now I have no explanation for why it takes every hundred years for America to get one. Because the law of probability dictates that it should be every few years. But we're being told it's once every hundred years. So there is a solar eclipse every day, uh, every month. The only problem is we don't see it because it's usually over the water. So you can bet me a thousand pound because you have to come up with the reason for why it's not when the, when the, when the moon orbits the earth once every month, you burk. I bet you a thousand pound solar eclipses happen every single month. The issue is we never see them because they're normally over the earth. They're uh, normally over the water. It hurts. <laughs> My brain actually gets sad when I hear him say that and the confidence he displayed. And when I then asked him about it, he doubled down and said that he was right. I wonder why he deleted the channel that, that was posted on then. Anyway, Sleeping Warrior, you fucking idiot. Go to the remedial classroom. Okay, class, welcome back to the special room. Once again, settle down. <sighs> What is it, Mr. Riley? You, you've put crayons up your nose and now you can't get them out. 
Why did you put crayons up your nose? Because they look tasty. That's not how you... You don't eat crayons. Never mind. This will probably go quicker without you. Just go to the nurse's office. Okay, so Mr. Riley tried to claim that there should be a solar eclipse every month because the moon orbits the Earth every month. It's a strange thing for a flat earther to claim, but whatever. This isn't the case, of course. Only an absolute idiot would think that because space, you know, is 3D. The moon's orbit wobbles up and down, and that means that most of the time during its orbit, it won't actually be in between the sun and the Earth, which means that the moon's shadow will be either above or below the Earth instead of hitting it. Now, your homework. Everyone is to learn to tie your shoelaces. You're all grown fucking adults and shouldn't keep tripping over your shoes. Now get out. Did I stutter? I said get out. I hate you all. Next up is an actual physics teacher that happens to also be one of the funniest people on the planet. Yes, you fucking moron flat earthers. It's a planet. Shut up. I think he's a person anyway. He might be a cat. More research is required. So when I was asked what is the most ridiculous thing a flat earther has ever said to me, I, uh, I felt spoilt for choice. Immediately my mind went back to the time when I asked Nathan Oakley what his favourite Christmas present would be. It would be three girlfriends. But then I thought I couldn't possibly use that. Uh, not after Nathan Thompson once told me that he was doing a brain training program that actually made his feet grow. So my, man, my feet, my feet are getting bigger. I grew four shoe sizes since I've started this program. But then I thought, no, I can't use that. Not after that flat earther actually confused the term fusion, as in nuclear fusion, with the word fizzy. Well, no. if it's fusion, isn't that just bubbles of air in water? But then, will any of that ever beat this? Mass is identical to weight, but this mass, this weight, is space weight. Well, if anything could, it might just possibly be this. If you were travelling from Scotland down to, uh, to London, on a ball, it would be downhill all the way. You wouldn't need to put any petrol in your car. You'd just use your brakes. But in all honesty, after this week, I don't think I can use any of those arguments because just this week on Agree to Disagree, I had the most spectacular argument presented to me by a flat earther who was arguing for the existence of God. Now, the debate itself, does God exist, is not necessarily a ridiculous debate. And I think if it's done well with two articulate debaters, it can be quite interesting. But I was gobsmacked at just the sheer lack of evidence that this flat earther brought. Check this out. Uh, God is an infinite consciousness. He can be physical and non-physical. And, and the, the is, empirical evidence you're using to infer that from, just so I'm clear and I'll pass, pass you back to Leo, the empirical evidence you're inferring that from is that shapes exist. Yeah, our vessels, our vessels is our objects. But no, because I we just have to clarify I was right with that. So shapes exist, therefore God. So there we go. But I suppose we all know if you're a flat earther, what's more important is the conclusion you draw, not the evidence you draw that conclusion from. But I think I'm going to have to go because I'm just feeling a little... <laughs> Sorry. I should definitely keep that door open for fresh air. Yeah, sorry, are we, mate? It's just disgusting. All right, I said sorry. Get out of the house. All right, wasn't that bad. See you later. Thanks for that, cats. Find the link to his channel and his twin brother's channel in the description below. Next up is a man that needs no introductions, but, you know, I'm going to do it anyway. He took the debunking world by storm with his viral video on a gate-swinging flat earth scientist, and rumor has it had his legs replaced by prosthetics just so NASA could test their new Lego-based technology. It's Simon Dan. And this is the dumbest thing he has ever heard of Flurf say. Thanks, Craig, for inviting me for your 50th episode. And I've chosen a very special moment from the now legendary Sleeping Warrior. If you'd completed primary school here in England, or maybe in year seven in secondary school, you will know what an equilateral triangle is, which of course is a triangle with three equal sides. You would also have learned that the sum of the angles of the interior of a triangle adds up to 180 degrees. No problem there, or is there? For Sleeping Warrior, it appeared that it was a little bit harder than he first imagined. Anthony, if a triangle has the sides one, one and one, do you know what the angles of the triangle are? Which kind of triangle are you on about? Are you on about like a right angle triangle? 
If he'd have listened to the question, he should have known it was an equilateral. The triangle has sides one, one, and one. Do you know what the angles are? Um, the angles would be... Well, it would be an equilateral triangle, wouldn't it? He finally gets it. Right, so what are the angles? <clears throat> now I'm going to ask this again. If you have a triangle with sides of one, one, and one, what are the angles? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up a triangle calculator. Yes, he went there. Let, let's do this again. Anthony, a triangle has sides one, one, and one. What are the angles? Is somebody recording this? Because this is just priceless. Well, the, the one I'm using, isn't, it's not giving me any when I do it. So either this, this calculator is wrong or you're wrong. We have a triangle with sides of one, one, and one. What are the angles? Yeah, so that's an equilateral triangle, right? Right, so what are the angles? Now, it should follow in Anthony's mind that if it is indeed an equilateral triangle, then all of the interior angles should be equal as well. And as the sum of the interior angles adds up to 180 degrees, then those three equal angles means that 180 divided by 3 equals 60 degrees. Will he get there? Does that work on a right angle triangle? The sides are 1, 1, and 1. What are the yeah. angles? When is that ever used in astronomical calculations for tr measuring trig? Oh, bit of dodging. I'm not going to tell you that until you answer my question. The triangle not sides... Not relevant. We use okay. right angle triangles to calculate the distance of things, correct? We don't even need to use right angle triangles. It only, what you're describing only works with an equilateral... Anthony, the fact that you can't answer these simple math questions crap you is, is ridiculous. Exactly right. Now, you may have forgotten this about triangles, or you may have never learnt it, and that is absolutely fine. The reason why this is so bad is because Sleeping Warrior spends most of his time trying to tell us all that gravity isn't real, that space is fake, and the Earth is flat, and he can't even figure out the sum of the angles of an interior triangle. That FTFE is exactly why the Sleeping Warrior triangle hash-up is the dumbest thing I've ever seen a flat earther do. Thanks buddy, and I'll see you all soon. Thank you Dan for gracing me with your presence for this video. I'd suggest that you guys go and subscribe, but let's face it, we all know you already are. Next, I'm going to hand over to a fellow debater of stupidity, MC Toon. He holds regular debates on his channel with flat earthers and 5G crazies. He's got a very different style to me, but if you do enjoy my debates and videos, then you're absolutely going to love what he says. This is MC2. Wait, what? He's not a rapper? Oh, uh, apparently it's Mooktoon, not MC Toon. So you're wondering, FTFE, what's the dumbest thing a flat earther has ever said to me? Dude, there's there's too many. I can't pick just one. There's like a 33-way tie for first. Um, so how about I just pick pick one, right? So I'll go with when they say the earth is observably and measurably flat. That's a that's a stupid one. So that's great. So there's really two parts to this, right? The first is that it's observably flat. This is a qualitative claim. It looks flat, therefore it's flat. And if you're intentionally imprecise, you could say it looks flat, but only for select circumstances, you know, at low elevation and as long as you don't measure it. And, you know, it's best if you have a low resolution photo too, like this priceless low res photo from right the hand. You can't distinguish the horizon. Then he drew a line over where the horizon sort of is and wrote flat AF. Wow, right the hand so woke. So, and he misses the irony of the impossible shadow cast upward on the clouds. But that's a different topic. The problem for them is that even at low elevation, we, you know, we don't expect to see a lot of curve and our eyes are not precision measuring devices, but they have another little problem. The horizon must be observably flat all the time, absolutely all the time, even at high elevation. If it's ever observably curved, even once, they've got some explaining to do. Their observations really fall apart when you use a rectilinear lens at high elevation, like flat earther Dwayne Kellum did from 120,000 feet. Or even better, when Mr. Sensible did it recently but I'll leave those details to him. So the bigger fail for flurfs is the measurably flat part. This is because they have never produced a measurement of flatness. I ask them all the time. They don't even know how they would go about 
measuring flatness. So why would they even make the claim? Well, because they heard someone else say it. You know, they're good little parrots. So a measurement is a quantitative claim. There are numbers in a measurement. Good measurements include units, significant digits, and a margin of error analysis. One way to measure flatness would be to measure the deviation from a horizontal plane. If the elevation or if the deviation was small enough, you know, within the margin of error, this would be a measurement. Have they ever done this? Never. Nope. Never. So there are measurements, though, of the spherical shape of the Earth. For example, this one by Jesse Kozlowski, where he measured the deviation from a horizontal plane over a level, calm lake. He measured this deviation uh, at 0.15 feet deviation over a distance of 0.48 miles. Notice there are units of feet, two significant digits, and a margin of error analysis. The standard deviation, which is the margin of error analysis, is 0.01. You can look at the details yourself if you want. Just Google Jesse Kozlowski Level Lake. But that's not all. There are many measurements of the radius of the Earth. For example, here's the results of one titled The Figure of the Earth and Iso Isostasy from Measurements in the United States. It was published in 1909. It measures the equatorial radius of the Earth to be 6,378,283 meters, plus or minus 34 meters. Notice there are units of meters, seven significant digits, and a margin of error of 34 meters. You want more? There are more. So professional surveyors measure things using triangles often. When measuring triangles on a flat surface, the internal angles sum to 180 degrees. But on the surface of a sphere, the sum must be larger than 180 degrees. The amount over 180 degrees is called spherical excess. Just keep that in mind. So in 1913, a 577 mile long survey from the state of Washington down to California was performed. The measured triangles are part of the published work. There are 148 measured triangles detailed in the book. Every single triangle has a measured spherical excess. Let's look closely at this triangle uh, measured at uh, Marysville, Butte and Kent. Uh, right, the spherical excess is 27.51 arc seconds. Notice there are units of arc seconds, four significant digits, and a margin of error analysis was negative 0.14 arc seconds. Since there's a measured spherical excess on every single triangle, we have measurements of non-flatness, right? The Earth absolutely cannot be flat. Do you want to do some spherical trigonometry yourself? Well, you can. You can actually get the radius of the Earth from these spherical triangle measurements. I've done this myself. I'm planning to do a video on it. And if you've subscribed to my channel, you can be the first to see it. If you want to look at these measurements yourself, I have them on my website and many others at mctune.net slash r. So, there you go, FDFE. The claim that the Earth is observably and measurably flat is an absolute joke. If you ever hear Flurf make this claim, just ask for measurements of flatness with units, significant digits, and a margin of error analysis. You will never get it. They will wet themselves running away as fast as they can to avoid that detail. Back to you, FDFE. FDFE. Like the rest, you can find McToom's link in the description. Next up is a man that Toon mentioned, Mr. Sensible. Mr. Sensible sent a probe to the edge of space and captured the curve of the Earth on camera. This has sent the Flurfs into absolute meltdown. Good effort, Mr. Sensible. Over to you. Jump. Rastafari. Bleeding hell are you doing? Naughty Tom Tom. Tom Tom, you can stop that right now. Right, I'll stop it. Hold on. Now I'm going to stop it. 
Right. I think we'll give that up as a bad job. Back to the studio. Sorry about that, everyone. Multi Tom Tom, please don't do that again. Now, Multi Tom Tom is my favourite flat earther because he knows absolutely nothing. He doesn't understand how clouds work or how the sea can bend round the curve of the globe. But better than that, he makes predictions. This you've got to see. Roll VT. This is the current President of the United States of America, Donald Trump. On 20th July 2019, it will be the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. And I believe President Trump will announce on that day that the moon landings and the whole space program has been faked by NASA. Now, the point of this video is for all NASA fanboys to prepare for what is coming. When this announcement will be made, it's going to be shocking. So please do not panic. In fact, they say crying is good for the soul. Ah, soul. Do not commit suicide. Get on with it. What is your prediction? All you NASA fanboys understand the gravity of the situation and to make preparations. NASA will be decommissioned very soon. Thank you and take care. Tom Tom, on the 22nd of February 2019, you predicted that on the 20th of July 2019, Trump would announce the moonshot was fake and he was closing NASA. It hasn't happened. That's the most pathetic excuse for a prediction I've ever heard of. And what's really worse, what's worse than being so stupid as to make a prediction like that is leaving the video up. However, you have no fear, do you, Tom Tom? Which is why you issued a challenge to someone for a debate. This is an open debate challenge to Mr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Dear sir, I am challenging you to an open debate on a platform of your choice. Well, Tom Tom, I'd say that's quite ambitious. And Mr. Carl M said, Dunning-Kruger, at its finest. To which you responded, who's that? I will debate him too. Tom Tom, I'm a nice guy, so to be helpful, I posted a message saying, do you want me to sort out so you can debate with Mr. Kruger? I can sort it for you. And you responded, he could be German. Well, I'm not sure, Tom Tom, but his English is fine. Where do you want the debate? Tom Tom, you really are an idiot who says the stupidest things. I've got to do something about him. I know. Hi, Dan. Hello, mate. It's Dan. I just said that. Didn't I just say that? How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Um, I'm just watching... Look, never mind what you're watching, Dan. I'm having to deal with multi Tom Tom who says so many stupid things. And I thought it's time to put him up under a weather balloon and drop him from about 35,000 feet. <laughs> anyway, hydrogen gas is quite expensive and I'm a bit stony right now. And I thought, what were your channel doing OK recently? You could send me a flipping great wadge of cash. Oh, yeah, it's somewhere on my um, desk. Hang on. Yeah, thanks, mate. If you can just send it to me. Oh, by the way. You know Nathan Oakley's been doing all those videos about you? Well, it's obvious he likes you, and I've set you up on a date. Cheers, mate. Well, I'm glad that's sorted. So, Tom Tom, we don't want to hear any more idiotic things from you. I tell you what, we'll give you a second chance. Why don't you sing us out, eh? Earth is flat, the earth is flat. You know the earth is flat. We ain't got time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. Do you believe in the lies of the Freemasonic Society? So the earth is a globe and it's spinning. I would say thanks, Mr. Sensible, but after you introducing me to multi Tom Tom's music, I I don't want to. You guys can still subscribe to him if you like, and you'll find his link in the description. Now, one of the absolute dumbest flat earthers that I've ever met is Nathan Thompson. So I thought I'd try and think of the stupidest thing that Nathan Thompson has ever said or done, but I couldn't think of just one. So here's the top five. I'm here with a real NASA employee. 
legit NASA employee. And I asked him, I said, uh, astronauts have almost died in space. Uh, they get, they got water in their suit and they almost drowned. And he said it was because of saliva. This guy right here, hold on, I'm gonna wait for him to get at the front of the line. And then I'm gonna ask him some more questions. There's a real NASA employee right here. Just wanted to point out this badly shaven beard here. This is a weak beard game. It looks like a hairy toilet seat. If you do this with your beard, stop. I know why he's doing this. He wants to make it look like he has a stronger jawline than he has. And it doesn't even look like he has a jawline, judging from this angle. It looks like his neck is trying to eat his cheeks. And with the way his beard is shaven, it looks like armpits. If I didn't see his nose, I would be 100% convinced I'm looking at a close-up of an armpit. Hey, my man. My man. Sir. Just the, the spacewalk. He won't, he won't talk to me. Sir. Look, he was all nice. He was all nice. He gave me NASA cartoon freaking emblems. Now he won't talk to me. He won't talk to me at all. Sir. Just tell him why they almost drowned in space. Please. Have a nice day, okay? Come on. You won't even chat with me? Nope. You, you, you hate Americans? Is that it? Excuse me? Hey, yeah? How the hell did you get that? Don't ever accuse me of that again. Well, hey, I'm okay? just curious. If you want to chat with me and answer my question. I don't have to chat with yeah, you. Yeah, that's true. That's Step true. Step over there, okay? I'm done you're not the boss of me, bro. I all leave because you asked me to. It's fine. Right, sure. But but this NASA's a fraud, bro. All right. They lie, they, they lie about everything. Just kinda, uh, enjoy time. That's cool. I was just trying to ask questions. Well, I just got kicked out of Starbucks for asking NASA employee questions because he's lying. He's a blatant liar. Hey guys, real quick, I got a flyer for you. Check it out. No, I'm sorry, we can't. I can't give him a flyer? Hey guys, check this out real quick. Space is fake. You're not on a spinning ball. They're gonna teach you, listen guys, they're gonna teach you you live on a spinning ball. That doesn't make it true. It's not real. The floor is not moving a thousand miles an hour. Okay? Are you crazy? I wanted to know whose house I'm couch surfing at. Well, check this out. Here's my shower. It's got eight shower heads, so this is what I'm using right now, all you broke globe bitches. <laughs> wow, eight shower heads. <laughs> all you broke globe fat ass stupid globe bitches. <laughs> Broke, but I have uh, four Harley Davidsons. I have my own business, and I have my own mud truck. <laughs> hey, let's see a shirtless selfie from your fat ass. <laughs> you really proud of yourself, hey, Jose, dude? You think I'm that happy good? for you. Does the Earth spin? Now, Craig will allege that there is some type of Coriolis force. So, I want to look at the two ways a spinning Earth could affect our atmosphere. First, would, it would cause the atmosphere to rotate as a cohesive, synchronized body. It's not what Craig says. Craig says there would be a Coriolis effect, or, or it would cause it like a giant blender. The uh, atmosphere would move separately from the rotating Earth. Brilliant. You're probably thinking that these magnetic rays are very dangerous to be around. You would be correct. There is one material, however, that blocks these rays, which is rubber. That's why I've ordered three rubber duck costumes to prevent these rays from harming our bodies. I just am worried mostly about Nathan because he's going to want to look at the legitimacy of it. He needs to have a suit on. You have to wear it. I'll wear it. No worries. I, we needed rubber what it, this has the, the, I do not feel any rubber in this. This is funny as hell. I think for the safety of like everything, every time you're entering this zone, can, maybe like a high pitched, like entrance. 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 Okay, stay away from this area. Yeah, um, I need to get my phone. Thank you, Nathan, for being so, so dumb. It makes my job so much easier. What's that smell? Smells like maple syrup, desperation, and vanilla? Hi, I'm Brainy Beaver, and I'm coming to you from the channel that grips onto FTFE's coattails harder than a tourist on a hang glide through the Alps. 
And I guess if you ask me what the dumbest thing a flat earther has ever said to me, it would be anything that Nathan Thompson has ever uttered. And that time that Spurskismo or Spurskimo told me that you can't breathe on the top of Mount Everest because it's cold up there. Like if you go to the top of Mount Everest, you have less pressure on a gauge than if you were at the bottom of Mount Everest, right? I disagree, but go ahead. Can we agree? No, I no. disagree. Brainy, that, that's then, what you, no, you can't. Right, Brainy, I, I this think is what I we're need, dealing I with. To, oh my I god. To, I, I need to cue in a bit more about Spurs. Um, <laughs> it's not that he disagrees with that there's pressure. He disagrees with atmospheric pressure. He says that is caused well, purely is he... by differences in temperature. But it, it doesn't matter. Okay, so what? You can't breathe cold air? That's bullshit. I live in Canada. <laughs> like, so why do they have air masks when they go to the top of Mount Everest? So the idea is that these people uh, who try to climb these mountains uh, are not in the right condition. There was a guy uh, in Europe somewhere, what? Wim Hof, where he's able to acclimatize his body um, to withstand uh, these cold temperatures. So what he does, um, he trains in the cold water. I live water. in Canada, it's colder than the top of Mount Everest, dude. And we all would die when we walk out our doors. Because you're telling me all Canadians are in shape then. All of us are in the perfect shape so we can go out in the dead of the winter. And there's people who live in the Arctic where it's even colder than I, where I live. And apparently they're all just the, perfectly in shape even though they've got diabetes and heart uh, disease. So, like, so, so this guy, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm probably butchering his name, but this Wim Hof guy, he's able to climb Mount Everest without an oxygen mask in shorts and do press-ups there in at the top somewhere and other mountains other high peaks where he's able to go there with others he's trained other people to uh, condition their body in such a way that they're able to withstand uh, such harsh environments now it's not Probably that they can not breathe damage, but... it's not that they couldn't breathe they could breathe just fine in fact he ran up the it's mountain <laughs> And you know what? Before we get out of here, I wanted to get into the mind of a flat earther. So come on with me. Let's get into the magic school bus and go get into the mind of Nathan Thompson. That should be fun, eh? Come on, everybody. Oh my god. It's so dark in here. There's no light. There's no light in here at all. Oh my god. Oh my god. And if I didn't mention that one time that Red Pill talked about the icy cold knife dagger or something. This is causing deep psychological reprogramming in the minds of the masses. This is inflicting a cold icy knife dagger of terror inside of them. All right, everybody, what we got for you today is a great deal. 
we have the icy cold knife dagger. Now you want to talk about a good deal. We got this one low price of $299.99 and that gets you both an icy cold and a knife dagger. That is four words for the price of one, okay? Now on other shopping networks, they may try to give you an icy dagger or a cold knife, but here on the Beaver's Cash and Grab, we will combine them all to get you the best deal possible. There's no need to have other products. There's no need for upsells. We got all four in the same place. Icy, cold, knife, dagger. You can't get anything more than that. What else would you want? Okay, now listen. This was crafted in Narnia by the famous knife dagger crafter, Igloo Ball. If you know anything about Igloo Seal Ball, you know you gotta jump on this product now because it's only gonna go up in value. This is an introductory price. What? You know what, I, I'm being told, I, can I? Absolutely, I'm gonna knock another $100 off this. We're gonna go for, boom, there it is, $199.99. This is a limited time offer, everybody. Now, if you think I'm going down to $99.99, you are crazy. This is as low as this will get, and you get all of this genuine knife, dagger, cold, icy, everything. You get the whole package, okay? Now, you wanna talk about efficiency. We're living in the apocalypse. You're with your friend Alex Jones. You're cutting up your neighbors. I, I don't judge. You do you. You hang out with who you hang out with. But the bottom line is, you're gonna to have to take this warm meat from your neighbors. You gotta put it in your fridge. It burns up your fuel. Uses that energy from your generator. This knife will literally chill the meat as you slice it. So you take that warm old neighbor, you cut him up, and afterwards you're like, what do I do with all this cold meat? It's chilling my hands. That, that's the kind of efficiency we're talking about with the cold, icy knife dagger, okay? Now please, pick up the phones. You got 1-800-BEAVER-GRAB, that 287-4722. You gotta get on the line. I see them lighting up. We have a limited number of these. Anyways, that's it for me today. Thank you very much for having me as usual, FTFE. And if you guys haven't checked out my channel, you should come see Brainy Beaver. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Brainy Beaver is amazing and you guys should definitely check him out. Wow. There we have it. The dumbest things flat earthers have ever said. I understand that that was a lot of stupid and you may have harmed yourself by facepalming too much and I am sorry about that. And I'm sure you understand that, that is all the stupid that I can take for today. But before we go, I want to give a massive thanks to my amazing channel members and patrons who make this channel possible. I am constantly blown away by the level of support from people. It's amazing. If you want to support this channel, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button to become a member or go to www.patreon.com forward slash FTFE to become a patron. Once again, you amazing people. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, please hit the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss anything from FTFE. Why don't you go ahead and also do it for the amazing creators who helped me out today. And remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. Fight the flat earth.